fixed that problem. Uh, so let's see, let me drag this back up here. The, the other thing that I do every single time is you can see that this ugly black border, the HD PBR puts this black border on the top and on the right side of most of your videos. It may be on the top and left on yours, uh, but sometimes it's just on the top. I mean, it's really weird, but almost always it puts it on the top and the right for me. And what you want to do is you want to crop that out. Now I'm going to click my uh, event pan crop button here, which is that uh, little uh, diamond shape square thing with a line through it, it looks like. And uh, you can drag the, fo the uh, video in a little bit, and you can see that, obviously I cropped that way too much, but you can see that it cuts that off, which is great. We don't want that black bar there. I've got a default setting that I've already made for Skyrim. But you can also go over here to the width and just change this width to like uh, 1260 or something like that. Cut about 20 pixels off and you should see that that goes away. I believe that 1260 is actually what my Skyrim default is and that is right. So you can see there it just kind of cleans that up a little bit. The black line is no longer there. Makes it look nice. When I see a YouTube video and I see that black line as a director I'm like ugh. One second and you could have fixed that problem and it would have made it would have made all the difference. It would have looked a lot better. And uh, it's just, just kind of lazy if you leave that there. So make sure you edit that out. It's just uh, the best way to do it uh, so that it looks nice. I got a little overzealous there with the mouse. Anyway, the next step that I take every single time is I go to my track effects for the video track. As this loads, this always takes a while to load because, oh, I still got my capture model running, module running. That'll help if I close that out. And uh, the track effect should pop up here anytime. As, a, as, a, as I said before, I have a crappy PC right now come on there we go baby all right so i always add a sony color corrector and a sony sharpen every single time you can see those two were added up here i'm going to click ok you probably aren't going to be able to tell on this uh frame so let me find a better frame that's got some more color to it uh there we go there's some nice uh, red in the banners there and a lot of bright blue sky and some tans and grays greens all kinds of colors in this one so we've got a a drop down menu of a bunch of presets for the color corrector. You're going to want to select Studio RGB to Computer RGB. That's really just going to add some color depth to the video that you're looking at. So let me click that. Watch the reds in those banners. Well, I didn't even see it. I didn't even see a change. There, yeah, you can see it. Well, you can see it very little. I don't even know if you can pick that up on YouTube. Uh, it just brightens some of the whites. And the colors just pop a little more. I'm going to click that back and forth a couple times, see if you can notice the difference. So Studio RGB to Computer RGB, it just adds a little color depth. And uh, that's really what you want. It kind of makes it a little more realistic. You don't need to change any of the settings on the sharpen. So let's flip through here, see if you can see any of the, the color differences here. There's a good one. That's a that's a, got a lot of colored like brightnesses and stuff like that. Uh, let me go back in here real quick so you can see the difference. So I'm going to take it off of Studio RGB. You can see it kind of like grays everything out. It's a little washed out. And then bam, there's bright colors put right back into it. Darks are darker, lights are lighter, and the colors are just more, they just pop a little more. So I'm going to stop droning on and on and on about that. And uh, lastly, the thing you want to make sure is, you see this gray bar here? It's got a yellow little diamond or triangle, I guess that is, in the corner. This, let me see if I can find the other end of it here. There we go. Let me drag this back in. Nine times out of ten, you're going to have like a 12-minute video, and then you're going to do like a Let's Play that's like 20, 30 minutes or something like that, and this bar is going to be left short. What this bar decides is what is going to be rendered. So if you only have 12 of this selected by this gray bar, excuse me, 12 minutes of this selected by this gray bar, and you've got a 20, what is this, a 27-minute video, it's only going to render the first 12 minutes, and the last 15 minutes are going to be lost. So you want to make sure that you right click on that gray bar and go to select, or set selection to project and you can see it automatically selects the furthest piece of the project that it can and you want to make sure that this is right at the end of your video because you may have something out here at the end that you left that you forgot about and this may pop all the way out to the outside here and you'll wonder why the end of your video is being overlapped by this gray bar. Anyway, you, uh, you just got to use common sense. If the gray bar goes to the end of your video, then you're golden. And uh, lastly, you want to make sure you have some pretty decent render settings checked. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to click the Render As button, which I probably did that too fast. It's the little blue button up here, or you can go to File, Render As. Either way, it works. 
And you're going to want to notice that this is just basically like, uh, you know, if you go to type a Word document and you click save or click save as is a better option. You can go in here and you can change the title of the uh, the title of the video here. We can set it to test or whatever if I can spell test right. And you're going to save as type. This is my favorite type of file to save it as. Main concept AVC AAC. And that saves it as an MP4. You can use anything you want. Uh, for instance, Machinima accepts, uh, let me see, I think MPGs, MP4s, they do not accept AVs, and they do not accept, uh, what's the other one that people try to use, MOVs, they don't accept MOVs, and uh, there's another one that's pretty popular that they do not accept, WMVs, they do not accept. So you really want to use MP4s, that's basically the YouTube standard. So main concept AVC AAC I like to use and then you want to click on custom. This is going to allow you to select some custom settings for your renders, which is a render if I, you guys don't know what that means. Obviously we've got a video track here, we've got an audio track and another audio track. A render flattens that. It's kind of kind of the best way to put it. It takes the several audio tracks and the several video tracks that you have and makes them all one track or one video. So that's the rendering process. Your rendering settings are going to decide the size and the quality of your video. So if you want to look here, the custom frame size is still set at 1280 by 720. You want to leave that as it is. Allow source to adjust frame size. I leave that unchecked just because it is unchecked. And the frame rate should be set at whatever you recorded at, which we recorded at 29.97. Allow source to adjust frame rate. That is checked by default, I think, and I just leave it that way. Field order and unprogressive scan because that's what we said earlier. Pixel aspect ratio 1 because that is our project settings aspect ratio of 1. Reference frames is 2. Now you can set this to, I believe, up to 16, and then you can set it to 16 with a two pass, which means it's 32 reference frames, which means it's going to drastically increase your, or I'm sorry, yeah, drastically increase your render times. Your render times will be astronomical if you want to do 16 reference frames with two passes. And to be honest, I don't know much about what reference frames actually means. I know during the render process, it checks every certain amount of frames, and this uses two reference frames instead of however many you want to pick. That seems to be the best that I found. I don't know if it affects your file size or not, but it doesn't matter. Just do as you're told and <laughs> use uh, two reference frames with a deblocking filter checked. I always have that checked. I think that's checked by default, and I just left it. The variable bitrate, you want to make sure you choose a variable bitrate instead of a constant. And I choose my average to be set at 2.24 megabits per second. And I believe I set that as average of 2.24 because that is what YouTube uses for their videos. So I want my average to match that, but I want the maximum possible that it may use while it's being variable to be 5.12. I don't remember why I chose that, but that seems to give me the best quality video that I can get that matches about the quality of the YouTube videos after they've been down converted anyway. And it saves me a lot of file size because I could set this at a constant bit rate to 13.5, which is what I actually recorded it at, which would render it at a 13.5 bit rate, which is a true 720p. But that's not going to translate to YouTube. It's not going to be any or any better quality than what YouTube converts it to during the process of it converting it to an FLV or a flash video. So beyond that, guys, that is about it. Uh, the only other thing that you've got here is an audio tab, and I don't change any of this. It's the basic 44. Ooh, excuse me, 44.1 kilohertz and the basic 128 uh, kbps for your video or your audio. I'm sorry. So uh, other than that, you're going to click save. It's going to start the rendering process. Takes however long the uh, rendering process takes. If it's a short video, maybe only takes a minute, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. If it's a let's play on my crappy computer, this 26 minutes let's play probably took three to four hours to render. A 30 something minute let's play may take six hours ish. I don't know. It just depends. If you got a badass computer, you can rec you can render a 30 minute let's play in these settings in probably less than an hour. Uh, it just depends on how many com how many cores your computer is, how fast your processor is. Uh, if you got a decent video card, it's going to be used for the memory of it rendering. The last thing you're going to be looking at is. Audacity. You can see here that this is recording my voice in full time. So you're actually seeing my voice being recorded right now. If I stop talking, 
you can see that the microphone stopped picking stuff up. So where you've got these waves and these uh, up and down little things that are popping up here, these hills and valleys or whatever you want to call them, uh, that is where my voice is. These blank lines right uh, here are me taking breaths. So obviously you, you know, you understand audio and all this kind of stuff. You don't have to change any settings on Audacity. This is simply, you record your voice, as long as your volume levels are good, you can raise and lower your volume levels if you like. You go to File, you click uh, Export here, which you can't do because I'm recording, and you can export it as a WAV or an MP3, and you're good to go. You do exactly what I did in Sony Vegas. You import all three of these in, edit it down to however you want to edit it, add your text, add your color corrections, add everything that you want to add during the editing process, and then click Render, and you are ready to upload to YouTube, boys. So. Hopefully that helps you guys. I know I got really long-winded, and I'm probably going to have to cut these down into two. Yeah, we're at 24-minute uh, duration here, so um, bear with me. I know this is a lot of crap to go over, and you guys are going to probably have a 1,000 questions. I know I did when I first started, but fortunately, I didn't have somebody telling me exactly what to do, and uh, I'm kind of breaking the director rule. You're not supposed to give away your render settings, I guess. It takes people so long to find the perfect settings that they don't want to give them away because it gives them the upper hand for other smaller YouTube channels. I don't care about any of that shit. I want you guys to succeed if you want to succeed. So I'm going to give you every last bit of nugget of knowledge that I have, and hopefully you guys can run with it. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, obviously make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and I will do my best to help. Again, I am not the video guru, so I don't know how much I'll be able to help, but I'll do what I can. And and uh, other than that, guys, I am going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me. Again, any questions you have, let me know. I know you'll have a bunch of them, and I'll do my best to help. So until next time, guys, we'll see you later. Thanks, guys. Bye.